Hey guys, Comet here. Welcome to episode 12 in my Spaced Out series, where in the last episode, I got this a battery box built here with built-in cooling, which means I didn't need the old one that used to be here, along with some other stuff. So the oxygen got moved as well down to the bottom of the base here, and the brine takes a different path now. Instead of being heated up in the refinery before being desalinated, it just comes straight down this way, into this water tank here, where the brine is given a chance to cool off this tank before it is converted into 40 degree clean water. Now anytime a desalinator desalinates salt water, the outgoing water will always be the temperature of the salt water, but when it's processing brine, it always comes out at at least 40 degrees. So I have this little setup for now which also then grabs some heat from this tank and puts it into this one over here, just with this polluted water loop. Because this polluted water needs to be warmed up in order to not stifle any of the plants over here. Because the polluted water supply, if we follow this pipe back, comes from this cool slush geyser here, and it outputs at negative 10 degrees as well. And if I just pumped that straight into the plants over here, then these would all stifle. So I have to warm it up a little bit first. And then the last thing you might have noticed I put in in between episodes, this canister emptier used to be up here. I couldn't figure out where all of the little bottles of oxygen were coming from, but I finally figured it out when a dupe ran past this checkpoint. When they drop off a damaged suit, then any oxygen that was in the suit gets put into a little bottle. So I moved the canister emptier from out here down into here, that way they don't have to go very far in order to get rid of the bottles. Now this is like the fourth time trying to record this episode. I was dealing with a mainline plug with plumbers and then technical difficulties with recording and then the few times I was able to get a decent recording, uh, my colony ended up dying, believe it or not, because of a lack of reed fiber. So I actually expanded over to here, I got pretty much this whole map dug out, and then I started using too many Atmos suits between the two colonies. So what I want to do in this episode, I need to completely restructure all of my farms, and then put in a counterflow heat exchange on these desalinators. But when it comes to farming the base Draco type, the pinch of pepper plant is king, because these can grow in hydrogen. That means that the Draco will always be in hydrogen regrowing their scales. And I don't need to have this double gas layer here. The only problem is that they need to be kept at 35 degrees at a minimum. And this polluted water is too cold for that. So what I wanna do, I'm going to get rid of this whole section and move everything over to this area. I want to move the water tank from here to where the farms currently are. And then I'll have a separate polluted water tank on top of the Draco farm over here that has kind of like a two-step heating process to it because I want to use some incubators and incubators give off some heat. So I can kind of preheat some water using the incubators and then I am definitely going to need some tepidizer. But I think I can construct this in a way where it's not too power hungry. So I will expand over this way a little bit. So I really need to get plenty of reed fiber to make sure my dupes don't run out of Atmo suits, because when there's no more Atmo suits, they can't go around the base to do anything to get anything done. And then I tried disabling the checkpoint so that they could leave without the suits, and then they were just all getting scalded down here, and it... it wasn't fun. So I really should have gotten a much better Draco farm going from the beginning, but I've never had to rely so heavily on Dracos before, so this is kind of new. So up here, this will be the roof. And then the incubators can go... I guess I don't need insulated tiling here, it can be just regular tile. And this will be the width of the farm, so 24 tiles, but then there's the two walls on both sides, so a total of 26. And then the outer wall will be right here. So the incubators will be up on top here, and then I need a space for the polluted water. And then, actually the flooring here should be the hydroponic tiles. And you're going to want 13 pinch of peppers per 6 Drecos. You really only need um, 2 pinch of peppers per regular Dreco. And I'm going to have 6 in the farm. But I want to have that extra 
pinch of pepper plant so that I can actually use some pinch of pepper nuts. And when I do the math on how much water this cool slush geyser produces, I can feed almost exactly 26 pinch of peppers. So if I do two farms of pinch of peppers, 13 each, that's 26, and it's almost perfect. So on the insides of the farms here, I'm gonna want some transit tube access points. The two grooming stations, critter drop-offs, actually maybe I should put the shearing station first, then the critter drop-off. So the way I want the plumbing to go, the polluted water will come down probably through the center, then cool off this area up here, before then being dumped into here. Then I'll have a liquid tepidizer and a pump. Now, I want to be able to fit two thermosensors here, one to control the tepidizer and one to control the pump. And then the output from that pump can run this way into the wall so that I can hide the majority of the plumbing. And then into the farms here. So the polluted water will be first warmed up by the incubators, and then it'll be warmed up by the tepidizer. At least, that's the plan. Because as you can see, I'm actually already starting to get a buildup of worn Atmos suits here. I didn't realize just how quickly these suits will be breaking. And then to get power into this whole system, I think I can come in right here. I can go up this way, and then come down here. Or, actually, because this is going to be actively cooled, I could put some power transformers up here. So this wire will power all of the tubes. And then this wire can power all of the stations here. Now, one incubator, when it's powered, can maintain a ranch of seven Dracos without it ever going extinct. And I'm gonna have two farms of six. So that means I could have an incubator for one farm, an incubator for another farm, and then put all of the eggs in, well, first the incubators, because I want to have at least one in here. But after that, yeah, okay, here, I got a plan here. So I'll have one incubator per farm, that way I can manage the reproduction rate. Then I will have the grill up here with a auto sweeper here, a conveyor loader here to send the food back, and then I actually want another one here that the dupes can use that will ship the eggs that aren't used by the incubators into a little pool of water. That way the Drecos can grow up and turn into meat instead of omelets, because meat gives you more calories than omelets. And if I actually move this whole thing over to here, then I can make room for a little light. And that should be plenty of water. And to make sure that there's only hydrogen in here, I'm gonna set up some gas pumps and pump out all of this oxygen. Wait a minute, this whole thing is off by one. There's only one ladder here, but two here. I hate it when I do stuff like that. Okay, so what the heck is going on in here? Well, this conveyor loader is gonna be where all of the edibles are put in now. The barbecue, frost bun, preserve, muckroot, nutrient bar, omelet, all of the cooked stuff, basically. And we're not going to allow manual use on this. Then over here, we do want to allow manual use, and this is gonna be the critter eggs. All of the Drecklet eggs. So the dupes will pick them up from in here and put them into here. Then they'll go down here and be hatched and then the Drecklet will turn into meat and then they should pick it up and put it into here. Now the only problem is that I need to keep them from going in a loop here. Because once the eggs are dropped off of the chute, they're gonna try and pick them back up and put them into here. So I may need to put a door here. Then this auto sweeper can reach 
into here and to the grill. And then it can take the meat from here and put it into the grill. At least that's the plan. And then this setup down here. So this thermosensor is going to control the liquid tepidizer. And we want that to go if the water is ever below 40-ish degrees. And then this one controls the pump if the water is ever above 36 degrees will allow it to run. Now, now this is just doing exactly what I wanted the dupes to not do. It's just going in a loop. So this auto sweeper needs to be out of range of this conveyor loader. So I could put it over here, I guess. Now, I want the priority on these incubators to be 6. And I will set them to... Drecklet eggs. That way the dupes will put them into these incubators before putting the excess into the conveyor loader. So now, I need to get the polluted water connected up here. So it will come off of this, down this way, and go into here. And I will reroute all of the polluted water I currently have over this way. Now that there's a vacuum in here, I can get some hydrogen going. And I will get the pinch of peppers planted. I'll put in the critter drop-off, and I'll get the old Drekos moved to the new spot. So I don't need any of this anymore. And I'll get all of these Drekos wrangled up. So now I have all of these pinch of peppers growing, being supplied with warm polluted water from up here. So now I'm actually just going to let all of these Drekos die off over here. And I guess I can keep the Sweetles alive. I'll put a, another farm down here for them. But if I am going to let them die, I need to be kind of stingy with my plastic. So I think the last thing I'll do with the plastic I have left is convert all of these beds to the more comfortable ones. And then not put in any more tubing. So I'm going to wrangle up all of these Sweetles here. Get rid of these buildings. And get them moved over to here. So the last thing I'm going to do over here, I'm going to put a bottom on this. And this whole thing over here is going to be my water tank. So I don't need this bottom part. I'm going to keep this farm here just until they all die off. Try and get... I try and squeeze as much plastic out of them as possible. But here at the top, I want to make a counterflow heat exchange and have the brine more properly cool off the outgoing clean water. So the heat exchange will look kind of like this. There'll be a pipe that runs this way and then a pipe that runs this way. I need the desalinators to be on this level here, and I'm going to overbuild it. That way, if one of them gets backed up, there'll always be a second one that can process the material, because the dupes have to come and remove the salt. So this will be the incoming brine. It's going to go first into you, and then into you, and then you, and then you. And then all of the outputs can link up here and go back up. Now I just need to alternate between radiant pipe and insulated pipe. Then the output water can come down to right here and drop onto the floor. Now everywhere there's a insulated pipe, I'm going to put an insulated tile. And then in the gaps, where the radiant piping is, I'm going to put a metal tile. And I'll do the same thing for this pipe, and then seal the whole thing up. I've got to get some power down to these desalinators, and I've got to reroute a lot of this plumbing, so I don't need this polluted water line anymore. I want to send all of this salt water, or brine, 
down this way. I have to jump over this temporarily. And I don't want any of it going up this way into this tank anymore. I want to empty out these two tanks. So this is erupting. Let's follow the brine. It's going to come down into the counter flow here and cool off these beginning tiles. We can see the temperature start to change here. And then the... Oh, I'm an idiot. Oh my god. Don't let me live that one down in the comment section. So what I should have done here, I'm sure everyone caught this, I connect into the input, not the output. Then the output goes this way. Now, I do anticipate getting a couple of broken pipes at the beginning here, but once this is up and running, I think it'll be fine. Now we'll see this work. And the water counterflows against the brine. And it comes out here at... almost freezing. Perfect. So now I don't need these desalinators anymore. So I'll put the liquid pump here now, and route the clean water this way. Now I'm not really in the mood to wait for this pump to drain out this tank, so what I'm gonna do is put in a temporary wall right here. I'm gonna poke a hole in the bottom of this and let all this water drain out into here. And there it goes. This tank's almost empty, but I don't need this loop anymore, so I'll drain that and remove all of this piping. I'll get the last bits of water mopped up here. I should probably stick a couple of bottle emptiers here and set these to clean water. I'll mop up this last little bit here and then put a bottle emptier back over here. That way my dupes have somewhere to throw all the polluted water. So I no longer need any of this, or these. I don't need any of this piping. And I'm gonna have to come up with a better priority system on the polluted water to make sure that the bathrooms never get backed up. Alright, this section looks nice and clean now. I'm still waiting on these guys to die off. And I do actually run out of power right here. And then, because my dupes are so reliant on the transit tube access points, when these go dead and there's no power left on the grid, they actually get stuck inside the farms. So what I want to do now is put in some more glass forges over by this cold water. I'll make some more glass and then put in a smaller pyramid over on this side. Because I do need to leave some space for some rockets in this area. And this actually sticks out further than half of the map. So, right, this is 71. And then if I do the same size solar panel array over here, then it would stick out to here. So that would leave me with only this much space for rockets. Of course, I could just drop the whole thing down a little and cut off these two panels at the bottom, then that would give me eight more tiles, so I would have this much space for rockets, or I just get a colony going over here and start bringing back some petroleum, because I'm only briefly out of power. Either way, I, I still want these glass forges to finish off the glass in here. Oh, that's not good. I will break these two, that way my dupes can always have access to it. And it might actually help cool off this area so that the pipes don't break. Because the brine is actually too cold for the water as it leaves. So if I have this exposed, it'll heat up these tiles. And to save my dupes a lot of trips, I'm going to put in this storage bin here with sand selected. Because they can bring a lot of sand per trip if they're putting it into a storage bin. But if they're putting it straight into a forge, they only bring 100 kilos at a time. So I think this will actually be the last thing I get done in this episode. So this was just some pre-work I needed to do 
before colonizing this planetoid. And I have everything planned out already. The duplicate housing unit is going to be right in this area. And I'm going to ship over some oxygen and water through here. Once I get everything established over here, then my main problem is going to be power. And to get power over here, I'm not going to put in a solar array on top. That's just going to take too much time. The simplest thing to do once I get an electrolyzer set up over here, I can pipe in water. I no longer need to pipe in oxygen. I can make the oxygen here from the water. And then I can pipe over hydrogen, burn the hydrogen over here, and use it for power. Oh, right. I forgot I said I was going to put a priority system here. Uh, the simplest way to do that, I'm just going to have the bathrooms plug directly in. And then the water from the geyser can bridge on. Now, the one last thing I want to do, other than finishing off the glass here, still waiting on them to make more glass, is put in this valve here and have it match the output here. That way there's a more stable flow on the incoming and outgoing water. That way I shouldn't get huge temperature swings in these beginning tiles, and that should prevent the pipes from breaking. We'll see how this works. And I am getting some critter starvation notifications, which is good. That means these are dying off. I don't want Devin to waste his time with these anymore. Okay, but let's see how this valve works out. So far, so good. I think I'll actually match the output not to the 7.9, but rather to the 7.9 times 202 divided by 600. So that looks like it's 2.66. Let's use that instead. That's the problem with counterflows. They don't like to start and stop. So let's see how this performs. No breaks so far. The water is leaving at 2 degrees. Let's cover up one more section of the counterflow. So if this is calibrated correctly, the brine should be coming in now because this is about to run out of water. I guess I'll just slow this down to 2500? I don't want to go too low because then it's going to limit my water throughput. Yeah, I'm getting some broken pipes now. Well, that might be because I'm running out of power. If I keep having problems with broken pipes, I may have to rethink this whole counterflow. But this looks to be working with the flow rate set to 2500. And if it is going to be set that low, then I don't need these desalinators here. Because even if one of them backs up, the second one should be able to handle that flow. So I've been watching this for a while now, and it doesn't look like it's breaking any of the pipes anymore. So limiting the flow was the way to go. Now, between episodes, I'll go ahead and let all of these Drekos die off. And now that I'm building up a lot of reed fiber here, I am prepared for the extra Atmos suits. So that means in the next episode, I will definitely be building a base over here and grabbing some oil. But in this episode, let's see, what did I get done? Well, I moved the water and polluted water tanks. I got this proper Adreco farm going now. And I have this counterflow heat exchange working, making clean water at about 3 degrees. So all of this should be pretty cool down here. And this water is much colder than the... I think it was hovering around 20 degrees in the old water tank. So plans for the next episode. I want to use this teleporter, send over some oxygen, get a base going over here, and start tapping into some of these oil reservoirs. So I think that's pretty decent progress for this episode. I would like to point out that I have recently surpassed 1,000 subscribers. 
so I want to thank everyone that's joined along the way. And I think it's high time I made a channel update video. I think the last one I did was like six years ago. So stay on the lookout for that. And I do want to leave a reminder about my Discord server. I have some Oxygen Not Included channels if you're interested. Link is in the description. Just make sure you click on the little thumbs up to enter the entire server. But anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you in the next episode.